up guys, this is Riley here with Hots Motors. Today we are gonna to be showing you guys how to install new vintage USA gauges in your classic truck. Today we're gonna to be showing you all the ins and outs as to how to install these things, how to wire them up, how to go through and make sure everything's working good, the install difficulty level, the tools you're gonna to need, all that good stuff for that, so that you can do this in your own classic truck. We're installing this on an 84 Suburban, so a square body Chevy. Um, however, the things we're gonna be teaching you today are applicable across all classic trucks if you wanna install a gauge cluster like this one in your ride. This even applies to a lot of other different gauge manufacturers. You could use the things you learned in this video to install gauges across all sorts of different um, gauge manufacturers. But the gauges we're working on today are new vintage USA gauges. Before we jump right into this, let me tell you really quickly who we are. My name's Riley, we're here at Hodson Motors, and uh, here we give away cool old classic trucks. We build these trucks and give them away to regular people just like you. If you're seeing this video sometime in November, December of 2022, we are actually giving away that rad Suburban right there. Uh, but if you're seeing this video later and you're stumbling, stumbling across this, we're always giving away something else that's really cool, some other cool classic truck. Check us out at hotsonmotors.com to see what we're giving away right now. So with that all being said, there's our shameless plug. Let's hop right into this gauge install and let's show you what we're doing. First and foremost, you're gonna need some hand tools. Uh, these are just some random hand tools that I grabbed. You're gonna need some screwdrivers, some a set of sockets, all that kind of stuff, some wrenches so that you can do all of the vehicle specific stuff to your vehicle, like removing the gauge cluster, the old gauge cluster, pulling off your dash tram, uh, installing your sending units. The hand tools like that are, are going to be what you need to do that end of the install, the stuff we're not gonna really cover in today's video. Uh, for today's video, what we're gonna focus on mainly is how to get the gauges set up and how to wire them. So in order to wire them, you're gonna need a set of wire crimpers and snips. So I really like the Klein tool, just basic uh, wire snip and crimp combo. Um, I love these, I use these every single day. They're old and I'm never getting rid of them. I love them. Um, and I'm also using my Klein wire stripper. Um, these are just an absolute lifesaver. You can strip wires with one hand and they're so great and they strip so quickly. So these are not that expensive. I think these were $15 and these were $15 get yourself a set, you'll use them for the rest of your life. So they're great. So you'll want to get some of those. You're gonna need an assortment of different um, wire connectors, butt connectors. So I buy my butt connectors from crutchfield.com. They sell really high quality butt connectors, way better than what you could find at like the parts store and way cheaper. You go to O'Reilly's or AutoZone and you're gonna spend an arm and a leg on butt connectors. Just get them online. And uh, I've bought from Amazon as well, really cheap butt connectors, but they kind of suck. These ones are from Install Bay and Crutchfield supplies them. They're not that expensive but they're very high quality butt connectors. You might need some spade connectors. You might need some, some ring connectors. You might need a different variety of connectors that are specific to your vehicle or for your own specific needs, um, but you'll need something. So, you know, get some, get some butt connectors for sure. You'll need a lot of butt connectors for this install. And then the other thing that we're gonna be working with today, and you don't have to have this, but you're gonna need some sort of voltage meter. So you can either use like a regular, you know, traditional two prong voltage meter, but I like a power probe like this. Power probe like this is gonna hook up to the power and ground on your battery, have a really long lead so it can get inside your vehicle. And then the power probe, because it has power and ground running through it, you will be able to uh, poke wires or poke connections and see if there's ground running to it or see if there's power running to it without having to switch anything. You could also send power or send ground through this unit. So if you wanted to test something to make sure that the lights come on, you could send power through real quick and boom, you know you've got a good ground because your lights came on. That makes, hopefully, hopefully that makes sense but these are great. Now, Snap-on and other suppliers sell these things for a couple hundred dollars and they can be pretty expensive. I bought this cheapy on Amazon years ago, like coming on three years now. This thing was cheap and it has not failed me yet. So do I really think you need to go break in the bank to buy one of these? Absolutely not. I would suggest just getting a cheap one off Amazon and you could probably buy five of these before you could buy one from Snap-on or something like that. And it's lasted me a really, really, really long time. I use it, you know, at least twice a week. So Love my cheap power probe. This is some knockoff on Amazon. Just go grab one of those, they're great. So that's kind of some of the tools we're gonna be using. If I have to go get any other tools for this install, I'll show you what we're using, but really this is the main gist of it. It's not a very heavy tool installation. Uh, you don't need a lot of tools for this. Uh, let's talk about difficulty. How hard is this install to do? Um, this is a daunting install because there are some steps involved. You're getting inside the truck and outside the truck kind of a lot as you're doing sending units and all that kind of stuff. But in reality, it's not that hard. Um, if you take your time, you just gotta be willing to snip some wires and butt connect them. And you know, it's really not that difficult. I think if you can put in a radio in your car, you can do a gauge install. Um, but this is something that if you can do it and if you can muster up the courage to do it in your truck in, or in your vehicle, you're gonna, you're gonna feel you know, way better about your, your, your abilities to work on your own vehicle 
absolutely something that anybody could do. And I think that you could do this. You could probably do all the wiring uh, for the gauges in an afternoon and do in another afternoon, you could do all your sending units and in a weekend, you could have digital gauges in your vehicle. Um, quickly, let's talk about why you want digital gauges. Most of these older vehicles, their gauges have stopped working or their gauges stop working or they don't read accurately. And you want accurate data so that when you're driving your prized possession of your old vehicle, it's not gonna break down on you. You're gonna have accurate, accurate information the whole entire time. So the digital gauges are a huge improvement over like stock gauges, especially if you have some gauges that have stopped working rather than spending the money to go and, and fix a gauge that is already old and busted up. You just go and replace the whole entire unit with some digital gauges. So let's go ahead and unbox these gauges and show you what's inside. So inside these, inside this box here, first things first, right up front, you can see our nice, beautiful gauges. So we went with the performance two in white. Uh, for our gauges here today. The, the cool thing about the new vintage gauges is that all their gauges are around and they're kind of a modular design. So you can place your water temp, your fuel, your oil pressure, your voltage meter in a different variety of, you know, however you want to place it. They don't have to go in, in one specific place. So, you know, if your steering wheel blocks off your fuel gauge and you really want to know how much fuel you have all the time, then you can place it in a better place for you. So first things first there, you can see our gauges. They look great, really nice. Also including the box we have um, some of our install rings. We've got all of our wiring and our sending units. And then if we remove the gauge cluster, we have our mounting bezels. So something nice about um, the new vintage systems is that the, um, in most of their systems, this mounting bezel will replace the entirety of your old factory bezel. So you don't have to go and reuse your old nasty plastics. This will all bolt in to your dash in the vast majority of their applications, you won't have to reuse any of your old stuff. Um, you might have to get a little custom and do a little bit of trimming and, and get these things to fit absolutely perfect, but just straight out of the box, you, you should be able to just put them right into your dash. So uh, let's go ahead and get our gauges assembled, show you how this works and uh, get them assembled here in our housing first, and then we can move over to the truck. Let's go ahead and get started assembling these gauges. Let's talk about the new vintage gauge though for just a quick second here. So like we said before, these are kind of modular in the sense that they go into the gauge bezel however you want. You can place the, the speedo and the tack, you know, these are interchangeable and then all the four smaller pods are interchangeable. Uh, but something great about this is once you put power and ground to the two main units, all the computers that control the smaller units are all controlled into here. So on the backs of the main units, you have these other smaller plugs that the plugs from the small units will go, will connect right into. So your small units will plug right into the back of your big units. And so they all get power and ground together. So uh, there's no need to, like if you've done gauges from somebody like uh, um, auto meter, you have to run power and ground to each individual great gauge. It's kind of a pain in the butt. With this, all you do is run power and ground to the main two units and then they give power and ground and they send all the information to the other gauge units as well. So um, off the back of these gauge units, you'll have these two larger harnesses um, that will plug in here and so you run all of your sensor wires from all of your senders and like your fuel flow, everything else is gonna get ran into these wires in the back of these. And so these give all the data and power and ground to your smaller ones as well. So makes wiring in these gauges similar to like a Dakota digital gauge. Um, whereas the only difference here is that a Dakota digital gauge has like a separate computer that you would mount somewhere under your dash. These you don't have to find a place to mount that computer, which I actually like better. I like not having to find a place. If you've got a crowded, you know, area under your dash, it kind of sucks to try and find a nice clean hidden place to mount that computer up. The computers are contained within these gauges. So I really like that. Really quick plug here. Uh, you'll see on our tachometer because our Suburban there has a 12 valve Cummins in it, we don't need a full 8K tack. So we have a 4K tack for diesels. Um, this is available in a couple of their different designs. So if you have a diesel and you want a 4K tack, it is available. So that's pretty nice as well. Um, let's hop into uh, putting these gauges together. So we're gonna assemble now our dash bezel first and then we'll get all of our gauges assembled into the bezel as well. In all the new vintage gauges, is they've got instructions, specific instructions for how to, how to install this in whatever truck you're doing. And so read the instructions. I can't say that enough. I like to read the instructions one time all the way through before I even start. However, the instructions are well-written and are printed in colored pictures. So that's nice too. So, so what we're doing now is we're just assembling our, our two pieces of our dash of our, of our gauge bezel together. Um, it's just two number eight screws that are going to pop this baby together here. So not a big deal. Very easy. Using an impact just to make this a little easier for our time's sake on the video. But if you don't have an impact or don't want to use one, you don't have to. Now 
our bezel's assembled. Uh, there's a little bit of a bend here in this bracket, so if we need to, we can adjust this and, and get this to fit right. Trucks over the years, things will get shifted around and moved around and the dash cube bent a little bit. So these are never gonna be 100% perfect fit. You're gonna have to be willing to make some slight adjustments in order to get these things to fit absolutely perfectly, but it really should all be pretty easy and pretty straightforward. All right, now that our gauge bezel is put together, we can start mounting our gauges in. So this truck is an automatic, and so you're not having to look at your RPMs all the time. So I'm gonna put our speedometer right in the middle, and then I'll put our tachometer off to the side here. So it'll look just like this. We've got our brackets here included that will hold these to the back of the dash. Using a nine millimeter socket to uh, tighten down these brackets on the back, making sure we get our, our gauges nice and straight. Uh, you don't want to put this into your truck, your gauge be all crooked, and then you have to take this back out later as you're, as, you know, just make sure you get them straight for you. Okay, we've got our two main gauges on. Bracket install is really straightforward. You just put the brackets over the long studs and it'll just tighten it down, hold against it nice. Make sure you get it straight. Now we'll go and put in our uh, our smaller gauges or accessory gauges and uh, show you which gauge will plug into the back here. Okay, so now these are gonna go in. You can put these in in any order. Your, your, your small gauges can go in in any order that you want. You can place them in any position that you want. However, they hook up to the specific gauges, specific of the small gauges will hook up to a specific of the large gauge. So your fuel sender and, or your fuel gauge and your temperature gauge. So our fuel and our temperature, our fuel and our temp will hook up to our speedometer. Uh, so we have full sweep speedo right here. So this speedometer will get these two gauges. Now you put them wherever you wanna put them, but these wires will need to reach and, and, and reach to the, to the speedo. And then your oil pressure and your voltmeter will go to your tachometer. So we'll go ahead and put those in and show you how to, how to plug them in. It's really easy, really, really self-explanatory. We've got all our gauges installed. Again, really straightforward. Just use the brackets and the, the flat washers, the lock washers and the nuts. So really, really, really straightforward there. You'll need a, a eight millimeter uh, socket for the smaller gauges and a nine millimeter socket for the larger gauges. Um, so now let's go ahead and wire these gauges up. Before we do so, let me tell you really quickly about making sure, and I want you to do this because I've had it happen to me, double check that your fuel sender uh, gauge type is properly set. Now these come preset from the factory for whatever truck you're buying them for. So if you're buying them for you know, a bullnose Ford, it will already have the, the ohm sender or the ohm range type for a Ford. However, they could be you know accidentally wrong from the factory. So we're gonna pull off this plug here on the back of um, we're gonna pull off this, this little uh, grommet on the back of the speedometer gauge, and that will show us um, the dip switches, and then you can verify with your manual, in your manual, uh, on one of the pages inside of your owner's manual, it'll tell you the dip switches. So you can say, hey, I've got an 84 Chevy Suburban, my dip switches should be this combination, and then you can double check that it's right before you go put this in your truck, because I hate for you to put it in your truck, and then your, your fuel gauge to be upside down. So let's just double check that before we go any farther. I'm gonna pop this off. I just have like a really small screwdriver and ice pick. And underneath there, you can see these dip switches. So I'll go to that page in my manual. So the dip switches are on page 34 in this manual here. And we are looking at GM year 65 to 89. That's a zero to 90 ohm range for our fuel sender. And our dip switches should read, number one is off, number two is on, three is off and four is off. And uh, looking at it here, we've got one off, two on, three off, four off. So we should be good to go. We can put this plug back in now. Seal that up. You don't want anyone messing with those. Once that's set, you don't need to go do it ever again. Uh, that's one of the nice things is that you don't have to go in and program anything. Once you plug these gauges in, they should be programmed to your vehicle and uh, you should just be able to wire it in and it will just run right away. So now everything's good. Our dip switches are good. I know our fuel gauge will work. Let's wire these in. Really easy how to wire the smaller gauges in. They just plug in here to the back. So. Uh, our fuel, we'll start with our fuel gauge, our top left here. Uh, our fuel gauge wiring is gonna go to our speedo wiring and it is going to plug into slot number B. So we have labels B, C, and D here on the gauges. This is going to slip into slot number B, slot letter B, sorry, letters and numbers. And clip in, and that's all you gotta do for that fuel gauge, done. Uh, next, we'll, we'll work on uh, temperature. So our water temp is our bottom left here. Coolant temperature is gonna go in and it is gonna go into slot number C, is in. D is not used, so don't worry about it. Um, then when you're done, you could, you could we could zip tie these wires up, tie them up, bunch them up neatly, zip tie them up so they're out of the way so when you're installing this in your truck, it's nice and neat. 
Uh, next over to volt meet, your voltmeter and your oil pressure gauge. Uh, your voltmeter is going to go to uh, letter B on this one here. So our voltmeter here is our uh, bottom right. So bottom right, we're gonna come all the way over here to B. And there's just enough cable to reach. They, were, they, they measured that out perfectly so that you don't have a ton of this wire hanging around. And then our oil pressure sender is going to go to number D. Oil pressure, top left, right? Okay, we're gonna go over here to letter D, just like that. Make sure everything's good to go. Everything's pushed in nice and tight. Make sure everything's good before you go. Putting this in your truck, I hate for you to waste your time. Put this in your truck and then it not work out. Okay, so now that that's all wired in, we're gonna put in our main uh, wiring harnesses. So it's the same color on both harness, so it doesn't matter. So they just plug in here into the back, real easy. Super easy. They'll snap in and then boom, we're ready to go put this in the trucks. Now, my own personal opinion, if I if it were me putting these gauges in and it, it is me, so I'm going to do it. I would label these right here with your instruction. I would label these um, right here on the table just with some tape and a marker. I would label to what they go to and then go put them in the truck. That way you can just really quickly and easily go back and forth and see your labels. And then you don't have to be constantly referring to your manual. I just label these all right now and then go to your truck and install them in the right then and there. So I'll do that. Let me label these up real quick. And then we will go put these into our Suburban and get them wired in and show you what they look like. So uh, let's, let's get to it. In the truck. So first things first, you'll notice our steering wheel is missing. You don't have to do this. We just took our wheel out because we're replacing it anyway, but you don't have to remove your wheel. It is nice though to be able to have all this access and not have to fight the wheel, but you don't have to do that. Um, but we're up here. We've got our gauges. Um, we've been testing our gauges against our bezel, making sure all of our gauge location is properly placed. If you have to, you'll just have to loosen the nuts in the back of your gate on, on your brackets and slide your gauges around in their holes um, so that everything lines up properly. But we've got that all lined up. Uh, we've got our wire snips, our wire strippers, and then our power probe hooked up to the power and ground terminals on our battery. Um, again, these are just phenomenal to be able to find ground and find power and send power or send ground whenever you want to do it. They're just great. So buy one, honestly, buy one. Don't use them. I mean, multimeters suck. I hate them. So these are just way better. We've also got our whole wiring harness. So I did a lot of this work outside of the truck. I would tell you to do the same thing. So um, I've kind of zip tied everything up nice and neatly. I have labeled everything from our instruction manual. I went through and found the colors and labeled everything. Um, if you're putting in a 4K tack, just a side note, if you're putting in a 4,000 RPM tachometer, because um, you have a diesel like we have, um, your, your tachometer is actually gonna be the orange. So if you're watching this video and you're doing a diesel tack, just know that your tachometer wire will be orange. Um, that's not in the instructions. I had to call them to find that out. So um, just side note, but back to what we were saying, uh, we've got it all um, tied in nice and neat. We did all of our butt connectors. There's three wires from both harnesses that need to come together. Your um, your light wire so that your your gauges will illuminate when your when your headlights get turned on. Uh, your power and your ground. So I've got those already butt connected together, and then I've got all the other ones um, just already ready with butt connectors as well. It's just easier to do this on the bench than it is to do it inside the truck. And then any wires that I wasn't using, I just trimmed down to half length. I would not suggest for you, unless you're a professional, and if you're a professional, you're probably not watching this video, um, but I would suggest that you don't trim them all the way down or depin them because you might need them later or you might have messed up and you might need to go through and change something. And if you trim them down too low, you're gonna be screwed and trying to butt connect on a really short stubby wire. So I just cut them down to half length, um, but I've got everything ready to go to where now I can start wiring in here um, on the engine bay. Now I also labeled in here, I found everything before making the video. So I already went through and relabeled everything here on uh, on our on our truck itself, on the, the truck's harness side. You don't have to do this. Um, you're gonna find these out by using your power probe. But if you have these already labeled, I would suggest that. That way you can go in, find a wire, butt connect it together and be done. Um, so let's go and get into showing you how to do that. So uh, we've got our power probe. Uh, first things first, you're gonna wanna find ground. So you're gonna poke around. Obviously, if you have a metal dash and you touch anywhere, it's gonna read ground. It's gonna read 0.0, .0 volts. Um, at, if you're touching ground. So if you're touching anything that's not a painted surface, remember painted surfaces, you can't get ground through. So if you're touching any bare metal, you're gonna get a good ground. And it's gonna read 0.0, .0 and it's gonna beep like that. Um, so we're gonna find ground. Um, if you're doing this on a vehicle that, are, that still has the factory gauge cluster, and you pull your factory gauge cluster out, you're gonna have a nice big terminal plug on the end of all of your gauge wiring. And that's gonna be really nice because you'll be able to just touch the bare metal um, connections on that plug. You should be able to touch those connections and really easily find what you need to find. 
This truck had some nasty aftermarket gauges already in it when we bought it, some auto meter gauges, and it was an absolute rat's nest in here. So we chopped all of that out. So I don't have that luxury that some of you guys might have, but still, here we go. So we're gonna find ground first. Here we've got some black wires. I thought, you know, most of the time black is ground, and if you're gonna touch those two wires together, boom, you're gonna get 0, 0.0 volts. Now what you're gonna wanna check is that, is that this remains ground. When your key goes on, it's remaining ground. When your headlights come on, it remains ground and when your blinkers come on. So turn your key over and put your blinkers on and make sure that that thing is not changing from ground to power. So that's a good ground and that's the wire that we're gonna use for a ground. If you don't have a wire like this, you can make a new ground wire by just taking any bolt that's on bare metal or, 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 or making a bolt hole like in your sub dash, anything like that, the way you can get good ground. Um, these aren't gonna pull crazy power where you need to ground all the way down to the chassis. That's not necessary, but you can ground to like the sub dash or the firewall, anything like that will give you a good enough ground. Um, so there, we've got our ground here. Next thing's next. Next thing we're gonna need to find um, some switch power. So a nice thing about these gauges is that they don't require both constant and switch power. You just need switch power. And then they have a built-in memory inside that won't erase when like the battery, when like the, the switch turns off or the battery gets disconnected. So we're gonna find switch power. You're gonna poke around on all of your terminals until you find one that with your key on gives you 12 volts power. So there we've got 13.2 volts. So now we've got a power source, but we gotta make sure that that's not constant, that that's switched. So turn your turn your key back off, and sure enough, you get switched. Again, make sure that that's not with your headlights, that that doesn't change with your headlights or change with your blinkers. As long as it doesn't change, then there's your good switch power source. So that's what we're gonna use as our switch power. Next, you're gonna go around and probe the rest of your wires to find stuff that you need to find. However, if you've ran your sending units already, you're gonna run your sending unit wires through the firewall, and you're gonna know what those wires are because you're gonna obviously know what color you used for those things. So I would suggest using blue for water temperature and a different color for oil and a different color for tack and a different color for speedo. Um, but you're gonna run all of those wires into your engine bay. Um, probably the one wire you're not gonna run into your engine bay is you're gonna probably reuse your uh, factory fuel sender wire. So on a square body Chevy, the factory fuel sender is a pink wire. I know this because I looked it up. Now, now here's where being good at Google is gonna come really in handy. If you look up your truck and you look up, you know, gauge cluster wiring, you should be able to pull up a schematic that will tell you what color wire goes to what. You'll probably end up just reusing your fuel sender wire as it's ran through all of your factory loom. Um, and then your, like we already talked about with the dip switches, it's programmed. So you can just butt connect that into your harness on the correct wire of your harness and be, and be good to go. Um, However, in order to test that that's right, you need to test for ohms and test your ohm resistance. Um, that's another lesson for another day we're not gonna go into right now. But still, look up your factory wiring schematics for your factory gauge cluster and that will tell you what to do. Um, some other wires that you're gonna need to look up are things like your tearing signals and your brights. Um, so, so that when you turn your brights on, you get a nice little blue bright indicator on your dash. So again, if our headlights are on, so we, first of all, you're gonna need to find your headlights. So with headlights on, you're gonna poke around and try and find one that goes away when you turn your headlights off. So I already know which wire it is. I'm cheating, just for this video's sake, I'm cheating. I've already done all this work, but. So we find our wire and sure enough, I've got 12 volts with my headlights on and when I turn my headlights off, I have zero volts. So there's your headlight switch and then these headlight switches have a dimmer in them. So as I start to turn this dimmer knob, you'll see my voltage go down and go down and go down until it goes down to zero. Again, back up, it'll, it'll come back up as I turn the dimmer switch on the headlight knob. So there's my good headlights. Next, we'll wanna find brights. So I've already found brights, it's the, this green wire here. With my headlights on, but my brights off, it should read zero volts. And then when I put my bright switch on, I get 12 volts of power. Turn my bright switch off, I get zero volts of power. So there's our bright switch. Okay, so now we gotta find turn signals, so uh, you'll you know, keep your key on and then put your turn on one of your turn signals. We're looking for right turn. I've already actually found this, but you get in here and then you're gonna see it's gonna flash zero to 12 volts, zero to 12 volts, zero to 12 volts. That means I'm getting a blinker signal coming through there. So there's our right turn. You'll do the same thing for your left turn and that's how you find your turn signals. Again, the magic here is the power probe. It's, it's great and you don't have to fight it. You can see I can hold it with one hand and still kind of use my thumb and use my right hand freely. Um, so once that's all said and done, we just gotta go through and butt connect it in and uh, wire in our harness all into there. So let's just do that real quick. Um, but before we do that, really quickly, what I'm using for tachometer, I'm using, I'm doing a come and swap in this truck. So 
if you're watching this video and you're wondering, well, how do I get TAC? I don't have a TAC output from like a, from like a, a distributor. Cause like if you're doing this on a car that has a, that runs on gasoline and you have a distributor, you'll have a TAC output. If you're running, if you're doing a diesel, you don't have a TAC output. So what can you do? You can buy a, uh, from Dakota Digital, they sell a, an interface unit that will transfer a, a signal, a W wire signal from your alternator. And then it will go in and transfer and change that into a readable signal that any gauge cluster can use to read as tachometer signal. So that's what we're using. Uh, just a little side note, it's called the Dakota Digital SGI 100 BT. It's a great product. I use it regardless of what gauge cluster you wanna use. You don't have to just use Dakota Digital or, or new vintage or anybody you can use this to transfer and, and use this gauge with anybody so that's another great product um so yeah let's just go and butt connect this all in and uh, see what it looks like um another thing that you're going to need to do is um make provisions for your program button these are the little intermittent switches that will control uh your gauge faces like the little lcd screens at the bottom that tell you your trip meter and all that kind of stuff so um on your wiring harness they're labeled as program buttons so you'll just need to wire this in, make a space. I'm gonna put these down by my headlight switch, down somewhere through my dash. Uh, you'll just need to find a nice hidden place where you like them. You can put them on the bottom of your dash. You can hide them somewhere nice, do whatever you wanna do, but hide them somewhere. The they're On both switches, it's just two black wires coming out the bottom. So either one can be ground and either one can be wired into your wiring harness. So I've got my two put together on a little terminal and I'll just ground this to my sub dash. And then the other two wires will get plugged in here to my onto my harness here under my program where it's labeled program buttons. It'll get wired in there and there, and then you just fasten these wherever you want to fasten them and then you're good to go. So you can go in and, and, and make any changes and, and use your use your gauges. So that's just the last thing you gotta do. Um, so now we'll go ahead and wire them in and uh, see what it looks like. All right, now that we've got everything butt connected in, we're gonna go ahead and uh, just zip tie everything together, make it nice and neat and tidy so that if you ever have to get back in here again, you're not have to fight your own, you know, spider web rat's nest of wires. So we've got all of our wires ready to go. This will give me enough distance here to where I can easily get the gauges in and out. But then when it's time to put them away, it's not super long to where I can tuck in there nice and neat. So, um, you know, I've done a couple of these. So, but even still, I don't think my job's the neatest. I leave my labels on. I don't rip my labels off afterwards because you know, if you screwed something up and you need to remember which wire it was, I know the labels are correct here, but maybe I've messed up in one of my butt connectors. You know, no one's perfect, so you're, you might mess one up. So leave your labels on, and maybe you have to snip one of these off, one of these butt connectors off and find something else later. But uh, yeah, just make sure you get in there, snip off all your excess on your zip ties. And uh, now we're gonna go ahead and put our gauge cluster in, but not all the way. I'm telling you, please do this step, please. Before you go bolting anything back down to the dash and tying anything up, just put your gauges in, plug them in, and make sure you did everything right now. Make sure your fuel sender's right, make sure that your oil temp, your oil, your oil pressure, your water temperature comes on, make sure that your tachometer works, make sure everything works right now before you go putting your dash all back together, because it's a pain in the butt to take it apart. And you might have screwed up something simple like your left turn signal turns on your right turn light on your dash. So just go ahead and what's what we're gonna do, we're gonna plug it in, test it, make sure everything works, and then we'll go putting it all back together. If you left your wires long enough, you should be easy, you should easily be able to get in here and mess with it. I uh, gotta remember which side is which, so our tack side here is on the right, speedo side on the left. Again, not bolting anything down, just wanna see that they work. Okay, we got power and we've got ground. They came on, all of them work, we've got needle sweep, that's the most important part. Now we'll see what else works. Okay, our fuel center's coming up. That's a great sign that our fuel float in our tank isn't bad. Yeah, that looks about right. Uh, we've got battery voltage, that's working. Um, our oil pressure and our water temperature should both read zero because the truck is off. Um, but surprisingly, that's all working. Let's, um, we can, I haven't grounded out my dip switches yet, so I don't know if they will work, but they do. If you ground it out to the, if you touch your dip switches to the dash, they will work. So our dip switches are correct. So that's good. Um, let's make sure our lights work. We turn them on, we've got illumination on all of them except for one. So one of these is not illuminating. See, that's why we check, it's okay. I can go in there now and I know that this one has maybe just come up disconnected from the main gauge or something like that. And that for some reason that one's not illuminating. If for any reason you have an issue, make sure you write new vintage and, and, and let them know. They'll always replace anything that you need. I'm gonna go in and check and make sure that there's nothing wrong, that maybe the wire didn't come disconnected. Um, but again, if I put this whole thing all together and I didn't check that, I'd be really pissed at the end. Um, but if anything, they'll replace it if it needs replaced. Uh, we'll check our blinkers, so our right blinker works. Oh, 
looks like our turn signal switch is bad though, because I'm not getting a left turn signal. But I'm not even hearing my relay kick on. But still, I know my right signal's right. When our headlights come on, those come on. When our brights come on, I get my little bright switch. And uh, yeah, it's looking great. I'm, po I'm pumped. So now that I know everything's working and, and, and I'm ready to go, I can go ahead and, and put this all back together. Again, because this is not a Suburban or a, or a square body Chevy specific video, we're not gonna show you how this goes in, but you're just gonna have to massage and make your way in and make sure you get your gauges in nice and, nice and neat. Um, you might have to make a little bit of adjustments, bend it a little bit here and, and do your best, but the instructions are pretty clear as about how to get these gauges in on your specific vehicle. But we'll go ahead, we'll sync those in, we'll put our, our, our gauge bezel back together, put our dash all back together, put our steering wheel back on, and uh, it'll be ready to drive. So stay tuned and we'll show you the finished product, show you just how great it looks. Um, but with that, we'll close the video. Thanks a ton for watching this in. So hopefully this helps you and gives you some tips and some tricks as to how to put these new vintage gauges into your vehicle and some other things that we've learned along the way. Make sure you subscribe to us here on YouTube, uh, our YouTube channel here, Hudson Motors. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Hudson Motors. And check us out on our website, HudsonMotors.com to see what we're giving away now, what our current giveaway truck is. You might be watching this video a little later than, we've po than we're posting it, and we'll be giving away something else that's equally just as cool as this Suburban. So again, thanks for watching this video. Please like and subscribe and we'll catch you on the next one.